I read an article somewhere, and I can't remember if it was on your website or or somewhere else, but you had written this article uh, about selling movie rights and what it's <laughs> like. Uh, are you thinking of the article that I'm that I'm thinking of? Uh, well, I've you, sold them a few times. I think I know, but keep going. It's, well, it's, anyway, you you talked in the article about you know the pros and cons of having someone buy your movie rights on a on a book. Um, and I remember one of the articles says early on, uh, when you're a starving uh, beginner and somebody wants to buy the book rights to your book and there's cash in the cash in hand, it's it's overwhelmingly wonderful. And I think you said a really good Christmas at the Gillstrap House that year uh, <laughs> in the uh, in the in the article. But then you went on to describe how there's some heartbreak involved in that uh, over time. And in, in so far as either the book doesn't get made into the movie or you have absolutely zero creative control, things like that. Can you can you encapsulate for our people uh, a sure. little bit of your thoughts and experiences on that? There are all kinds of different ways to come in a movie deal. Um, there's the first one, there's the option and then there's the purchase. An option is where a producer pays you this much money and they buy three years worth of uh, development time. So over the course of the next three years, they try to get a screenwriter and, and, and if it doesn't work out, then the film rights revert back to the author. And what they're buying are, is the right to turn your story into a film. That's, that's what movie rights are all about. Um, for an outright purchase, they pay for the, the right to make this movie and and the right they will possess the right forever and throughout the universe that's actually the contract language forever and throughout the universe now the outright purchase is typically a lot more money for the author than the option um so if the movie is not made in the case of nathan's run at all costs my first two books they pay hollywood paid an astronomical sum of money for the movie rights and then they never made either movie uh, and there has been some interest and they ran up millions of dollars in development charges against it. So it's now in turnaround is, is, is the term. So if another producer wanted to make it, they would have to pay the millions of dollars to the studio that owns it just to start their own development process. So it essentially kills those, those uh, projects, but I got to keep the money. And in the case of the option, I have one, the six minutes to freedom option is, they have re-upped that thing, I think, 10 times now. Well, probably not that, but eight times now. So and it's almost like an the, annuity. That's the nonfiction book. That's the nonfiction one. And it's the only uh, one of my books that is currently in development still. Um, so, you know, I think an author needs to be, needs to understand that a movie and a book are entirely different things. Um, I adapted one of Nelson DeMille's books for um, Word of Honor, for a film that was never produced. It's kind of my theme. Um, but, you know, I, I was paid by the studio to write the screenplay. And the last person I wanted to talk to was Nelson. Nelson's a fine man. Um, but I didn't, I wasn't interested in what he thought the movie should look like because I already know what he thinks the book should look like and it was too long. It has to be cut back in order to get it into a, into a two hour movie. So that was my focus. So when an author, hands his his baby over to somebody to make a film, you understand they're creating an entirely new form of, of entertainment that may or may not look anything like the book that you wrote, but you get to keep the money. 